Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining. I'm Suraj Patel out of a sunny day in Chicago, as I just mentioned, and we're going to go ahead and begin this webinar today. Uh, what we're covering is API testing, so we'll go through functional performance and process testing with Kairos. Um, feel free to add any questions within the chat. Uh, we'll go ahead and address those as they come in, and then we'll also have a quick Q&A session at the end as well. On top of that, I did want to mentioned that we have our website, Instagram, socials as well listed there. So any other follow-up questions can be posted there as well. And again, this is only going to be 15 minutes. We want to give you a bite-sized learning of what Kairos API testing is and let you get back to your lunch accordingly. So thank you everyone for joining and we'll go ahead and begin. Before we go ahead and dive into the demonstration for today, I did want to take a moment to establish the full stack of testing that Kairos has to offer. On the left there, you can see all of our different testing services. At the top, you can note we have web testing with the accompanying infrastructure in the browser farm. Similar, we have mobile testing with the accompanying infrastructure there as well, with device farms located in the US, UK, as well as India. And then today's topic, API testing, which will then conclude with functional performance and process testing. But you can also note that accompanying this API testing, there's API monitoring as well as service virtualization there as shown. Lastly, ending with business process testing, which is where we take all of these services and stitch them together to create end-to-end -end business process flows, monitoring your user journey. On the right there, again, I want to touch on our pillars, the first of which is being simple. You can see that we have an intuitive, low-code, no-code user experience with recorders and form-like functionality, all tied in with a range of visual as well as data-driven reporting options that are purely collaborative. It's also important to note that we are smart, in essence, we do use a visual testing design as well as autonomous testing and have a range of AI capabilities, including self-healing. Uh, and it's also important to note that we are a fully integrated platform, which is a one-stop shop for all of your testing requirements. Next, it's important to note that we are secure. So we do run on a virtual private cloud, as well as we are SOC 2 Type 2 and ISO compliant. And lastly, we are scalable. So this is a cloud platform, which does have its own accompanying browser and device farms as well, which are all managed here in-house. And with all of your testing requirements all in one place, it's very easy to monitor, maintain, as well as scale up and down, as previously mentioned. So without further ado, let's dive into the demo topic for today, which is API testing. Welcome to the demo portion of today's webinar. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is all the different testing services that we have. And so within API testing, you can know that we have functional performance as well as process testing. To begin with the functional testing, you can see that we have multiple import options. Firstly, you can import a Postman collection, or you can go ahead and just import a file there. Secondly, you have the option to go ahead and upload a WSDL or JSON URL there, and go ahead and import accordingly. But jumping into one of these test scripts, you can note that building it is actually very simple, even from scratch. In this case, you have the info form, and that's the first base that you have to fill out. And you can go ahead and see it's just that form-like functionality. Going ahead and filling out these form, adding endpoint, adding port number, uh, just clicking on the method type, and accordingly, Jumping into the authorizations, where we have basic auth and OAuth 2.0. Over at the headers and parameters tab, you can also note that you can add any sort of headers, path parameters, or query parameters. And it's again, it's just that key value pair, right? No code in nature. And then most importantly, we jump into our assertions. And this is where you can see that we have the ability to place assertions across the header, the JSON path, the body, as well as the schema. For JSON path, you can go ahead and use the JSON path extractor as well. Right, and go ahead and input that JSON body and then extract the response accordingly. Similarly, you can add any assertions on the body, but more importantly, with schema validation, you also have that schema generator. And you can go ahead and input that JSON body once again and then extract that schema response and then implement that right into testing. And you'll see a lot of these different forms and functionalities built in as Kairos is built from the ground up in-house. But before you go ahead and execute these tests, you're going to jump into project setup. And in project setup, you'll note the first tab, which is global variables. These are variables that are used across test scripts. So at any point, in this case, our endpoint, uh, which is used across multiple API tests, we can go ahead and store that as a global variable. And then at any point, if we have to refer to that endpoint, we just simply refer to the variable name within that test script. But more importantly, you can stack these variables into different environments, selecting these environments upon execution, giving you maximum coverage of these different test scripts and data-driven coverage as well. Next, you can see we have that prerequisite API option. Uh, with prerequisite APIs, these are APIs that are executed prior to uh, your selected API. In this case, you can see we have that access token that we need. Uh, and so the token generator API will go ahead and execute, uh, provide that access token, which will then be stored in the dynamic variables, as you can see. And then in essence, you can utilize that access token within any test scripts that are required. 
right? And so if you have multiple test scripts that require uh, that access token to go ahead and execute, you can go ahead and attach that as many times as you see fit as a one-to-many relationship as well. And then any sort of integrations will be done here. So we do offer integrations with Jira as well as pipelines uh, as noted. And then more importantly, any database connections can also be done there as well within the project setup. After setting up the project and going ahead and building these API tests, you can go ahead and execute them. In jumping into reports, the first thing I wanted to note is the top right corner where you have the email and downloadable report options. So we do understand that testing is collaborative in nature. And so we do allow these reports to be utilized as you see fit. And then more importantly, you have your pass fail indicators as well as your date and timestamp next door. And as we scroll down, you can see that all of your assertions that were placed in this API have been noted here. So first you can see the header where we have our status 200. Next, that JSON path assertion is visible as well. And you can actually see the expected and actual value as requested and required. More importantly, our schema has been validated. And for every single API test, you can go ahead and actually see the response. So when you go ahead and click that show button, you'll note that we have the response and request body as well as the response header there available. But it's important to note that these single executions and these single endpoint validations are actually parameterizable. So you can add data sets and actually go ahead and execute these for happy and unhappy paths accordingly. So that's exactly what we've done here. And so we've added an invalid data set and we've tested for a 400 and you can see that we have our passing case there. And then you can see that when we go ahead and open that up, uh, the response body says invalid for bad requests there, right, with the 400. And so in essence, what you can do is take these individual tests that you've already built out uh, and simply add more data sets to go ahead and take these endpoints and test them for happy, unhappy paths, ensuring the functionality across different data and maximizing that coverage. And this takes us into performance testing with Kairos. So the first thing you can note is all of the tests that you see there are actually identical to the ones that we saw in Functional. That's actually because we've imported them straight from Functional into performance testing. And now when we go ahead and select and execute one of these, you can see we have the option to simulate a number of threads. And this is a range of concurrent user clicks. So as we increase this, uh, it's essentially a range of different users accessing that resource simultaneously, right? And so this is client-side load testing, and you can go ahead and navigate that load as you see fit. And when you execute and enter reports, what you can notice you have a few different metrics. At the top here, you can see response time versus concurrent user click. For each individual user, as they're accessing that resource, you can go ahead and note their different response times there. And then as you scroll down, if you see a different deviation in your response, if you see any peaks or valleys in that response time, especially past the indicator threshold, you can always scroll down and look at the status code for that API. So you can go ahead and see a range of 200s, a range of 400s there as well. Uh, that's because this is a parameterized API, as we mentioned in Functional. Um, and then furthermore, you can always jump into the Advanced Reporting tab at the top there, and you can get a range of different other metrics, uh, including you have the min, max, standard deviation, uh, as well as error percentage across these different executions and these concurrent user clicks. At the top, we also have a range of different other metrics, including hits per second. And you can see a range of different visuals there as well. And I wanted to reiterate that this is all done through functional testing. There's no extraneous resources. You simply just import those functional tests that you already tested uh, and go ahead and bring them into performance and execute them against a load to ensure a range of performance capabilities. And this leads us into API process testing, which is as it sounds. It's testing the end-to-end -end process of these APIs. So what you can note on the left there is actually we have the same APIs that we've been working with throughout functional and performance testing. And that's because, yes, they've actually been imported straight from functional as well. And then on the right, you can see we've stitched them together with downstream and upstream data transfer processes to go ahead and make this end-to-end -end flow. And when we go ahead and execute, you can note that we have a branching structure that shows our processes and the passing validation across all of those data transfers. But not only did the process function, but when you go ahead and open these APIs, you can note the individual assertions that we placed from functional testing still validated here as well. And as you scroll down, you can see we have the assertions on our header, the JSON path assertions, and then all the way at the bottom, you can actually open up the APIs and note the response body as well as response headers. And it's important to note that we got all of this with a minimal resource spent, right? We just imported these APIs straight from functional and went ahead and stitched them together and validated those data transfer processes that we needed and in essence executed to get this end-to-end -end process flow. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is actually a recently added feature of Kairos in performance process testing. 
So in essence, what we're doing is we're taking that process that we've already previously created, and you can see we're executing it for performance. And so what that does is you actually have one metric, which is the response time per concurrent user click of the entire process, right? So as these concurrent user clicks go on, you can see how long the entire process is taking to go ahead and execute. And then as you scroll down, you can actually note the response times per API per concurrent user. So in essence, if the entire process is being delayed, you can go down one and figure out exactly which APIs are causing that delay. And more so, if you scroll down one more, when you find these delays, these different latencies, you can actually see the different status code per API uh, within that solution or within that execution, I should say. So now not only are you testing the process functionally for your data transfer processes, validating all of that data uh, and asserting that across each individual API and each individual call, but then you can take with zero additional effort that same process that was previously created, put a load against it and test all of the APIs within that process against concurrent users. For coming. Um, I did want to mention that this video, I know it was very quick and we did cover a lot, will be posted on all of our socials as well, including YouTube, and you'll be provided a link on that as well. Um, and starting the Q&A session, I did have a few questions come up. Uh, primarily, let me just go through this chat here very quickly. So we had a few questions regarding scheduling these executions or automating these executions. Um, I did want to mention that there's multiple answers to that. So if you did want to go ahead and trigger these executions, you can go ahead and do that through a pipeline. So we do offer connections with a range of CI CD pipelines, including Jenkins, Jira, Azure DevOps, um, Team City, and all of those will be listed on our website as well. And all of those have out of the box integration. So in essence, we are a build step within that process. And when you go ahead and execute that pipeline, uh, all of the heavy lifting will be done by Kairos. And then all of those reports, as we mentioned, those functional performance and process reports, will all be noted um, and relayed right back into the pipeline. So in essence, you never have to leave the pipeline when you execute. Uh, but if you do not use pipelines, we do also offer a CLI package. Um, and so you can go ahead and trigger them using CLI commands as well. Yep. So we did have a few questions on the sort of assertions that can be made. And so we do offer um, a range of assertions. You can place them on the header, the body, the JSON path as well. Um, and then we do offer schema validation as well. So it's kind of a take on contract testing in that sense, where you can go ahead and ensure that the API response formatting is proper as well there. Um, and then there's a range of assertions. We have contains, um, you can do data assertions, like direct data assertions as well. And then as you mentioned, you can go ahead and in import those global variables and utilize those in there as well. And so we have hit the 11.15 mark, and I did promise that we will be done within 15 minutes to go ahead and give you guys back a little time from your lunch. Uh, I hope this was very beneficial uh, in learning a little bit more about what Kairos API testing has to offer. Um, and we will be doing these monthly, so please be on the lookout. They'll be across our Twitter, our LinkedIn as well, and then our Instagram will have posts accordingly as well. Um, so thank you guys for joining and have a good day.